Hello, saints. Welcome to Desire and Truth. We live today at Living Water Fellowship. I want to give special thanks to Pastor Jim. We love you and his wife Sue. We love you and all the members here at our church. The message today is going to be very powerful. It's called the power of healing. Now, I had a message prepared, but you know the Holy Spirit, he's so gentle and he's so gracious. He ch allowed me to change it at the last minute. I said, what? What's going on? I had this message. I studied. I was on point. And he said, change it. I said, oh, okay. So when you obey, you obey. But I'm glad he did because it came out amazing. So we're going to jump right into it. Okay. The power of healing. I'm going to run through several things that I experienced, me personally, and biblically as well. I'm going to tie it into biblically. When you're going through like stress, and you, you're going through, uh, you know, like illnesses, and you just need special covering. There's certain special secrets in the Bible that tap into healing. So one of the first things I want to talk about is my mother-in-law. Hey, Abu, if you watching, love you. She was going through a tough time, and her husband was, was fighting an illness. He was fighting cancer. 
and she tried everything. She prayed, she, she worshiped, she did everything. And um, the, the Holy Spirit gave her a strategy, a divine strategy. And, and I asked, I said, Abu, what did you do to get Pop Pop, that's what I call him, Pop Pop healed? Because everything that what the doctor said was wrong with him, he went to the doctors and it was miraculously gone. She said, it's an old secret in Numbers 2624-26. So Numbers 24, chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. And she said, it's, it's, the, it's one of the only um, scriptures, or prayers rather, that God wrote himself. I never knew that. So the, the, the scripture says this. It says, the Lord will bless you and he will keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will lift his countenance on you, which is his face, and give you peace. But she's, there's something deeper. She speaks in Hebrew. So the, the, the rabbi told her that back in the day when, when the uh, priests would pray, Aaron and Moses, they would chant this prayer over the sick in Hebrew. So I asked her to translate the Hebrew to me to English, and it's a little deeper. So she said what she did was every night she laid her hands on the part of the body that was sick, and she chanted the Hebrew prayer a number 624. So I'm going to read it to you in Hebrew slash English, and I'm going to show you how powerful and deep this prayer is. It says, may Jehovah Yahweh kneel before you making himself available to you as your heavenly father so he can grant and bestow upon you his promises and gifts. It says, may Jehovah Yahweh, your heavenly father, guard you with a hedge of thorny protection that will prevent Satan and all your enemies from harming your body, your soul, your mind, and your spirit, your loved ones, and all your possessions. It says, may Jehovah Yahweh, your heavenly father, illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, continuously bringing to you to order so that you will fulfill your God-given destiny and promise. It says, may Jehovah Yahweh, your heavenly father, provide you with perfect love and fellowship and never leaving you and giving you substance, provision, and friendship. And it says, may Jehovah Yahweh, your heavenly father, lift up and carry his fullness of his being towards you, bringing everything that he has to your aid, supporting you with his divine embrace and his entire being. And the last one says, may Jehovah Yahweh, your heavenly father, set in place all you need to be whole and complete so you can walk in victory Moment by moment, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may he give you supernatural health, supernatural peace, welfare, safety, soundness, tranquility, prosperity, perfection, fullness, rest, harmony, as well as absence of agitation and discord. Now, can you imagine all that in the Hebrew, and she's praying that whole prayer over him until the disease was gone, and it was powerful. So I wanted to share that secret. The next secret I wanted to share with you guys in dealing with healing and dealing with getting illnesses out of your body is the power of communion. Communion is a weapon that you have in the spirit room that when you put God's blood inside of you, your bodies, your cells, your tissues, all have to obey with the power of the blood. It's healing. It breaks curses. It goes deep into the bone room. It drives out diseases. It reverses cancer-eating cells because they have to submit to the blood of Jesus. Um, it's a scripture that says Satan hates the blood. He's afraid of the blood because the blood is so powerful because the blood came and it, it, it was a Passover when the Passover came and they put the blood over the doorpost, the death angel, even death angel himself, couldn't touch the Hebrew Israelites because the blood covered them. And point number three is 
and dealing with healing is power and joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. It gives you strong. It's strength and it's our bones. It strengthens our tissues. It makes us strong when you're happy. What happens is in the spirit realm, when you're happy, if you can take this veil off and look in the spirit realm, it's God's liquid gold pouring down on your body and giving you strength. And he's telling you, no matter what, be happy. Because the reverse of that is when you bitter and you got strife and you have unforgiveness, it makes you tight. It tightens you up. It, 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 it comes in your body and it almost paralyzes you. So God always wants you to be joy. You know, David was happy when the Ark of the Covenant came. David was dancing. He was moving. He had joy. And the joy is a spirit. Everybody was dancing and laughing. And the bone marrow and the tissues and cells react to joy. Your DNA has memory. So it remembers joy. It's good to laugh. Laugh loosens the grip. It disarms the enemy. It, big time. Trust me. You got to laugh. You can just laugh, 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 laugh. I'm laughing now. <laughs> God, get me back on point. He wants me to laugh. I'm trying to stay focused, Lord. All right. The next one is... Um, I remember a time when um, I talk about the heaven culture a lot because God had transported me up in the heavenly realms. And I'm going to actually write a book on this very soon. So I'm, I'm giving you different pieces of what happened to me. So as I was in that state with the Lord and he was taking me to different rooms, that's why the Bible says that the Father has many mansions. That is exactly right. So that as he was taking me through, I seen a room called the healing rooms. So I said, Lord, what is that? He said, this is where the angels go to take the body parts down from the Jacob's Ladder I talked about last time to different people who've been praying for new body parts, you know, new legs, new vision. And the angels take them down and they do a divine transfer and you see people supernaturally getting healed. So it, it, was, it was a massive, it was like a football field and it had file cabinets, and it had the people's names on it. I couldn't believe it. And when you're going through some things, you pray and you say, Lord, send down your heavenly healing angels. Send them down. Eradicate this sickness. Come against this illness. Cover me. The enemy is tormenting my mind. Oh, God, I believe in your promises. And you, you, you get into the spirit. You pray in your heavenly language. Whatever your heavenly language is, you pray in it, and you seek the Lord, and he will start giving you answers, but you got to go into your secret place. The reason why Jesus says secret place, because the secret place covers you. It's like a hedge. That's where you and God and the Father commune, and you can get down on your knees and talk about your deepest secrets, and he will turn. Trust me, he will turn. I'll give you a quick story, a quick testimony right quick. I was sick one time. And I was so sick that I couldn't even get out of bed. Like, my body completely shut down on me. And um, God gave me, asked him, I said, Lord, give me a divine strategy because I felt like I'm under spiritual attack. It felt like somebody was, like, just sticking thorns in my body. I just, it, was, it was horrible. So I asked God, I said, Lord, I need to get healed. Like, what could I do? Ask the Holy Spirit. And what happened was um, it was some times at night where I felt like, like something was like holding me down. Like I couldn't breathe. It was like something around my neck, around my legs. Um, it started putting scratches on my back. And I felt like I was paralyzed. It was like a, a spurt of fear had came upon me and it was grabbing me. So um, I had looked up and it, I swear to you not, it, it was like a reptilian face, but a man's body. And I couldn't believe it. Don't mess with that cord, Boogie. Don't mess with that cord. And I couldn't believe it. As I was looking, I was like, wow, what is this? Like, what is this? And it was attacking me. So I asked the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, what, what should I do? And he gave me a divine strategy. I didn't understand it. That's why, that's why the Bible says perfect peace will pass understanding, will pass man's understanding. I couldn't understand what he meant. He said, this is what I want you to do. Now, some people might laugh at this, but I did it. He said, every night um, between 2 and 4 o'clock, Satan has sent 
his messengers to buffet you. You're under attack. Those are the times when witches, warlocks, and people that's in the occult religion um, put curses on you. He said, what I want you to do is, this might sound crazy, but I want you to take a shower between 2 and 4 in the morning every night. He said, pretend and visualize that the water is the blood of Jesus. And I said, what? I said, I'm just taking a shower. He said, no, when you go in there, you say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus, cover me, wash me, cleanse me, protect me from these demonic arrows that's trying to come against me. Um, rebuke these demons that's, that's in my home. Oh, God, cover me with the blood, the blood, the blood. And he said, do it until they go. So I did it. It took two weeks. And guess what? The pain went away. The demonics went away. And what the Holy Spirit says that when they saw the blood, they was afraid because devils and demons cry out when they see the blood. The blood makes them go back. And I couldn't realize. I was like, Lord, um, you know, I'm, I, I don't have everything is good. My pain went away. The back pain, the, the crazy stuff went away. My house was at peace. And he said, the reason why, because you obeyed me. I gave you a divine secret. You obeyed me. I know this might sound crazy. You're taking a shower. You're singing. But imagine the water is the blood of Jesus covering you, washing you. That's a prophetic act. And as I did it and I believed it, it worked. So another thing that happened to me um, is when I was reading about a story on how David, King David, was trapped and how David was crying out in the cave to God, and he was going through some hard times. You know, he, he, he was on the run from King Saul, and everything was against him. And I remember what the Lord said. The Lord told me to do what David did, and David started crying out, and he started praying in his heavy language. And one of the things David said as he was praying, he said, my God, will never leave me or forsake me. And he went into a circle seven times. He said, my God will never leave me or forsake me. He said, my God will never leave me or forsake me. He said, my God will never leave me or forsake me. My God will never leave me or forsake me. If you're going through sickness, you're going through a divorce, my God will never leave me or forsake me. If you're going through financial issues, my God will never leave me or forsake me. If you're going through a situation where the enemy is against me, my God will never leave me or forsake me. He said, keep saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it until you believe it and get into the bone marrow. He said, my God will never leave me and forsake me. I pulled Joseph out of the pit and made him king. My God will never leave me and forsake me. I turned David into a shepherd boy and made him king. So as I was saying, I said, Lord, give me a scripture. Give me a scripture out of the Bible because I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. I want to read this and meditate on this word so when these things come against me, I will have a way to fight in the spirit. He said, go to Psalms 116. I said, okay. He said, read it to the people. Whoo, okay. It says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayers for mercy because he bends down to listen I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped his ropes around me. The turns of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is. How good is he? He's so merciful. This is the God that we trust, the God of Jacob. The Lord protects those of us with childlike faith. I was facing death, and he saved me. He saved me from death. Yes, he saved me from death, my eyes and my tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walked in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believe in you, O oh God, so deeply. I believe in you. I am deeply troubled, Lord. My anxiety is getting the best of me. I cry out to you. I got people all around me hating on me, liars and, and whispers of liars. But one thing you said, O oh God, is that I can come to you, O oh God. One thing you said, O oh God, is that you will lift up my cup of salvation and I will praise the name of the Lord for saving me. I will keep his promises to the Lord. I will stay in his presence, O oh God. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O oh Lord, I am your son 
or your daughter, O God. I am your son or your daughter, born in your household, O God. You have freed me from my chains, the chains of bondage, O God. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fill my vows to you, O God, in the presence of his people, in the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. So I started reading that prayer. And for you know it, healing came upon me. I just, I, I felt the anointing up on me. And I, I, I could, and then God was just saying, okay, I want you to get deeper in the scripture. I want you to really get deeper in the scripture. So as I was going into some other scriptures, God reminded me of a story in um, 2 Kings 20, verse 1, 7. It was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the king of backstory. He's the king of Judah. And he was going through a war with the Assyrians, and he got sick. So he wrote a prayer. He wrote a petition to God, requesting God for healing. And in his prayer, it was some good words. He said, he said, um, um, the wall, he said, Lord, oh, God, remember me. He said, God, turn his face to the wall, oh, God. He said, as he turned his face to the wall, he said, Lord, I pray you remember me. He said, oh, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with a whole heart and devotions and have done what is good in my eyes. And Hezekiah weep bitterly, crying. So I want you to pay attention to this. I'm going to say it again. Lord, remember me. It's something about remembrance. When he cried out the Lord, it's a book in heaven that I've seen in heaven. It's called the book of remembrance. It's three books in heaven. It's the book of remembrance, the Lamb's book of life, and it's the book of destiny. And in the book of remembrance, God has to remember what he pre-written about you. So when he reminded God of that, he said, oh God, remember me, oh Lord, how I have walked. He was walking before you with faithfulness. So he reminding God of how faithful he was with a whole heart and devotions. He was telling God, I devote my life to you. And I have done what is good in your eyes, God, in your eyes, God. And he started weeping. Remember I talked about when you weep, God turns. Right, next scripture says, Hezekiah, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will heal you. I will heal you. I will heal you. I will heal you. God said these words, I will heal you. When the Father says I will heal you, nothing can stay in that body. No disease, no death, no illness. He said, I will heal you. And the moment he said, I will heal you, God said, I will even add 15 years to your life. So not only did he heal him, but he gave him a longer life to live. That's the God we serve. Yeah, kabasa, kabasa. That's the God we serve. God is a man of his word. Oh, shakabasa. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. If he said he's going to live it, believe it. Yeah, kabasa, kabasa. How much time I got, Isaac? I'm on the money. Yeah, kabasa, kabasa. Yeah, kabasa. So, so God kept saying that I, I want you to just, just give people prayers. Like, the, I think right now we're going into a season where a lot of the churches, not this church, Living Fellow Worship is on fire, but a lot of churches, they, they're getting caught up and not praying enough. Prayer and praise disarms the enemy. We got to get back into prayer, like deep prayer. Even if you don't know the words, you can groan, you can pray, because prayer goes up in the air, and it's like an incense to the Father. He smells the prayer. He loves when you pray. God has to turn. God has a throne. He has a mercy seat. He has a home, and he has a prayer room. Yes, he has a prayer room. And when you pray, the angels bring the prayers in a vessel, and they give it to God. So I just want, I just want to release prayers. Like anybody that's dealing with sickness, anybody got pain in their body, I just want to release prayers. So if you look at this and you close your eyes and you meditate on it, it these words from the Lord will do something for you. And normally I say it real hard or, you know, I'm amped up, but but Lord is saying, this one I'm going to say it real quietly and real docile. You want to put a little bit of music on, Isaac, like a little instrumental for me? And I want to say it like real, real quietly. It's just, 
It's just prayers when you're dealing with things. You know, it's from the Father's heart. He downloaded it to me. And I just want to share it with you. If you're going through things, you're feeling tired. There's a time when you tried everything, but you just got to pray. You just got to pray. And prayer works. It really works. Real docile, and I want you to listen and receive it. Whatever you're dealing with, I want you to come up to me right now. It says, Lord, I'm, I'm in pain. God, you are my refuge. God, you are my strength and the very present help in time of trouble. Lord, your word says that many are the afflicted of the righteous, but you will deliver him or her out of all inequities. Father God, look upon our affliction and our pain and forgive us of all the sins that we did knowingly and unknowingly. Father God, I'm asking you right now to send relief to your people. Send them relief, God. Give them sweet rest, God. Put the blanket of rest upon them, O oh God. Relief now, Lord. Whether you choose medicine, O oh God, or choose a miracle, O oh God, we will forever acknowledge you, God, as the source of our healing, O oh God. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit, to shift our focus from our pain to your promises. Because when you promised Abraham the blessing, you fulfilled it, oh God. Because they revive us and they comfort us when we stand on your promise, God. Heal us, oh Lord. We will be healed. Say that again. Heal us, oh God, and we will be healed. Heal us, oh God, and we will be healed. Save us, oh God, we will be saved. For you are the one, God, who deserves our praise, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you be merciful and kindness for our comfort, oh God. According to your word, oh Lord, we stand on that authority, oh God. We declare, oh God, we decree, oh God, your anointing power is driving out pain, is driving out sickness, is driving out demonic attacks, is driving out cancer, is driving out thyroids, is driving out diabetes, is driving out any issues with our kids being being on drugs, is driving all that out, and you're doing rest, respiration, oh God, restoration, oh God, in our body, oh Jesus. You are so mighty, oh Jesus. You are so strong, oh Jesus. I want to send a special blessing out to our pastor's wife, oh God. Cover her, oh Lord. Cover her, oh Lord. Let her know that the angels heard her prayers and they're coming down, oh Lord, to, to bless her, oh God. Keep her in your hedge, oh God. Keep her in your hedge, oh God. Keep the bloodline around her, oh God. Walk with her, God. Speak to her, oh God. Come against anything that's trying to attack her, oh God. Break their powers now, oh God. We come against the principalities in high places, God. Bring them down to their knees, oh God. Take the heads off like you did with Goliath and David. Took the head off Goliath and burn him in the dirt, oh God. Any walls that's hindering our people, oh God. We ask you turn it to dirt and ashes like you did the wall of Jericho, oh God. We are standing on your word, oh God. Lord, we tried everything. We tried everything, but we're going to stand on prayer, oh God. We're going to stand on prayer, oh God. Touch and agree with me right now that my God will heal you. By his stripes you will be healed. Touch and agree with me that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Touch and agree with me that our God will fight while you rest. Our God is mighty. He's strong. He's the Lion of Judah. When you call on him, he will rise up in Jesus' mighty name. I want to thank everybody for this sermon today on the power of healing. I want a special thanks to the man of God, the woman of God, for allowing me to get on this platform. I'm honored that I don't take that for granted. And I want y'all to come to church, people. Be here at 1030 at Living Water Fellowship in Pueblo West. Please, it's a beautiful church. The people are so loved. And when I came here, they embraced me, embraced my family. We got to get off the internet. We got to come and feel the presence of the Lord. And
fellowship. It's something about fellowship. When other believers touching and agree, God will answer your prayers. You can see people smiles on their face. You give them hugs. You encourage them. You tell them that it's going to be okay. Even if they're in a tough situation, you tell them it's going to be okay. You tell them these words that your God will not forsake them or not leave them, you not forsake them, and not leave them. When you say that, it does something to the spirit, man, of a person. You don't know if they on the verge of committing suicide, on the verge of not even going to church again, on the verge of divorce, and they come into the doors, and you hug them, and you love on them. We got to get back into that, people. We got to get back into that. That's the gospel of Jesus, to feed the sick. Heal the blind and take care of the poor. Jesus didn't have a big building. Jesus did everything on the streets. He didn't need that. Jesus was the man, the son of God. Oh, my God. And Jesus was the power of the Holy Spirit manifest. We got to go back to following Jesus. Not all these different religions, these new age and think positive and affirmations. You pray and you meditate on God's word. If you're dealing with sickness, if you're dealing with attacks, you pray on the word and say, my God is a healer. He's a healer. He will heal me. He will heal me. And you get it into it gets into the bone marrow of your blood and the blood of Jesus will cover you. I love you guys. I'm out. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace. Bye bye.